So the complaint on this call is nothing happens when you turn on the thermostat. As you can see the place is empty. The guy that actually does like the renovation or whatever, the painting, he said that this unit used to have a Wi-Fi thermostat on the wall and when they moved, they put this thermostat back on the wall. So first place we're gonna check of course is here. Make sure we have power, make sure it's hooked up right. Um, and if it's hooked up right, then we will go from there. And it looks like they may have switched the E-wire. You see it's blue and the black wire is on common. So looks like those probably are flipped around, but I've got to open up the air handler and find out. I'm going to take voltage first and see what I have. Let's check common to red right there. You see there's nothing, nothing at all. So I'm sure that the fuse and the air handler was blown when they switched those wires around. So let's open up the air handler and find out what they did. First thing we're going to do is turn off the power. So I'm not going to trust this, even though that says it's a 60, I'm not going to trust it. I'm just going to turn everything off, all the doubles, and then we'll open it up and see what we got. So my suspicion is right, the fuse is blown. All right, so I see that the, the brown wire is attached to the blacks. So that tells me that that black wire is connected to the right terminal which tells me they didn't turn power off when they changed that thermostat and caused the fuse to blow. So um, I'm also going to, while I'm at the, while I'm here, is I'm going to jump the um, uh, E and the W terminal together so that way when they turn emergency heat, they will have it. Because um, if you notice, everything is all connected right there anyway so so that's what I'm gonna do let me change the fuse and get a 3 amp fuse gonna go ahead and take that out and switch it so they went ahead and see all the wires down there they cut off and just left in the air handler well I stole one of them and I'm gonna use that as a jumper to put in the thermostat between W and E so when they turn on emergency heat, they'll have emergency heat. So I added the jumper there for uh, between E and auxiliary. And if you notice on the L terminal, they have a brown connected. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. Uh, just another thing to have a short with. <clears throat> Not being used on this particular thermostat. No reason for it. And some people may say, well, why didn't you just put a, um, since the blue was connected already, why didn't you just connect inside the air handler, you know, tie the blue in with the W. It was just as easy to do this or make the connection in the air handler. I had this open already. Wire was available. You know, so you could do it either way. With the cover back on the thermostat, let me turn the breakers on. Let me go ahead and test it first by just putting the fan in on position. Fan came on. While I have this thing open, I don't know if you can see the little run lines down the foil. I'm gonna get my leak detector out and see if we don't have the leak. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, I've checked for a leak with the H10 and it would not go off. So I checked underneath and it still didn't go off. I don't know if those lines are there from the original or what, but I do not come up with a leak. So I went ahead and turned the thermostat on to heat so I can build some pressure up in the coil uh, and then turn it off right quick before the fan comes on. And when I did, fuse blue. So now 
our little short service call has turned into something more. So now I get to go outside, check the outdoor unit, and see if I can spot anything. If I can, then I'll fix it and I'll be on my way to the next service call. But if I can't, then we will uh, start disconnecting wires and figure out which wire is causing that problem right there. Let's go outside. Here we are at the outdoor unit. Got the cover off and uh, the wires look like they're in good shape. So I'm going to uh, say that they're probably okay. So I've got my meter hooked up. So I've got some jumper wires on each terminal of the contactor. So let's turn the meter on and see what the uh, resistance is on it. So it's 2.3. So I would say the contactor right there is an issue. Um, I've already went out to the truck and got another one. And actually, I pulled this one off a new install last week because the wires were too big. And it's going to fit back in there perfect. Because it's a contactor that came out of it. Or one just like it. So let's go ahead and hook up the meter to this contactor and see what we get. So that's 16.1. So that contactor's good. That one's not, so let's go ahead and get it changed out. And I'll go back inside and put a new fuse in it. With my contactor changed, I'm gonna go inside and uh, put a new fuse in, get my reading so I can come back out here and do uh, superheat on this unit because I'm still kind of uh, wondering about those lines on the coil. Even though my H10 didn't pick it up, they're there, so I kind of still suspect a leak. So we're going to check this unit and see if it is low on refrigerant. So the fuse is back in place, the door is on, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the breakers back on. I'll go ahead and turn this one on cool. And we're on time delay, so we're going to give it just a couple minutes. I'm going to go get my AAV tool and take airflow. We have 114 by 14 there. And 114 by 14 there. This is a two ton unit and that's just not enough. Let me go get my AAB tool and we'll take airflow. It's gonna be low so our pressures are already gonna be messed up. All right, let's see what we've got. That's all it's going to give me. 69 CFM. <laughs> Let's go around to the other side. Gonna stop me in about seven seconds. All right, 99 CFM. Wow. Well, I've got another surprise here. Let's go where the. Well, if you'll see there, there's no, uh, there's no metal or anything to stop the air. So, let's go ahead and save that, start, let's do no for, is there a grill in place, let's do rectangular, and let's do about 3 by 14, let's start the test. Oh, it's going, boy. All right, 
it. So we got 220 CFM there. So just for giggles, let's go ahead and tape that opening off and put the cover on it and see if our CFM um, increases on our grills there. All right, so I went ahead and taped up the uh, air handler and put the cover back on. So now let's look and see what the uh, test turns out now. I hope my camera makes it. I just had to take it out to the truck and charge it, so. All right, so we get about 265 out of that one. Let's uh, go around to the other side and see what we get. And we get 265 out of that one. So what is that, 530? It's supposed to be 800 to see a film. Um, so there you go. That is a 14 by 14 return air grill. So I did go check the charge while my camera was charging up. And we're just gonna have to let it be what it is. It was a tad low, I added a little bit, but as you can see, we only got 500 CFM on an 800 CFM system. So we're about 300 CFM short. There you go. They should have put a ton and a half in here and we would have been closer, but you know, what are you gonna do?